Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you to our worship service here at Family First Baptist this morning. And we're glad you're here. And looking forward to today's events. Uh, don't forget tonight, very important announcement, uh, Townley First Baptist Church Youth and Children present the Savior's Birth at 6 p.m. Uh, looking forward to that. I hope you'll come out and, and join with us and support our children and youth as they present the Savior's Birth at 6 p.m. And I need to say anything, Alan? Danny? Everybody good? Come out and support. Enjoy. Good deal. Uh, and don't forget there will be no Awanas this Wednesday night for the kids. Uh, the adults will meet at 7 o'clock as usual. Uh, children's church leaders today will be Mandy and Marie. And uh, next Sunday will be myself and Susan. Uh, already start talking about Operation Christmas Child, items of the month of December and January. Uh, be looking for clearance items, anything on sale, deodorant, uh, no gel or sprays, washcloths, ivory soap, letters, notes, and pictures. Anybody found anything yet? Keep we'll looking. Start going on sale next week. That's right. All right. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer for BBS t-shirts. If you'd like a t-shirt, please put your name on there so we can get those ordered early and get the discount. <clears throat> and the women's Bible study will start back on Monday, January the 10th at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Uh, study guides are $18 a piece. If you'd like one, please see the read by today. And she'll order you one. You don't have to have a book if you don't have to pay that. Uh, but you can still join in the study. Any other announcements that need to be made? I think the men are going to meet right after the yes. worship hour this for, morning. Just for a few minutes over there. Any men that would like to study, young men as well. All right. Short meeting with the men. Any other announcements? Don't forget, we have a uh, uh, special gift for the preacher and his wife up here. If you haven't put your card in there, please do so. And we'll present that this seat after the worship hour. Any other announcements? In our Sunday school hour, we had 38 in attendance, an offering of $193. We had 46 contacts turned in and 19 daily Bible readings. I'd like to recognize those who've had a birthday in the past week. Anybody have a birthday? Anniversaries? Anybody have an anniversary? If not, Brother Wayne. Say 
But uh, this song here, usually at Christmas time is when you hear this song, but it's got a wonderful message to it. Uh, I know today I'm going to be preaching on Christmas gifts that have not arrived yet or have not been delivered yet. And, uh, and this song here, uh, you know, kind of just tells uh, the Christmas story. It's going to be just two verses of, of O Holy Night. But uh, I want you to listen definitely to the list of the words. Isaiah chapter 9. Yeah, at this time, if you'd like to be dismissed to Children's Church, 
I can get. Please let me know. Um, but have you, have, have you heard lately about, um, we don't have any FedEx workers here, do we? Okay, I was making sure. Uh, I know, I know we got some associated with our church. I just didn't want to talk too bad, okay? Have you heard about the FedEx packages in the ravine somewhere in Alabama? Have you heard that? Uh, I know, and that's another good thing, too. I, that's, I told Susan this morning, I said, uh, that's the reason why you didn't use the postal service. Ain't that right, Susan? So, uh, to uh, get you packages. And uh, just so you know, we've got to know our, our uh, postal worker very well, I promise you. Every time she pulls up home for homework, and I guess my wife bought something else, ain't it? You know, that kind of thing. Which she says, it's got your name on it. I said, I know, but she bought it. So uh, I know at Amazon and, and that stuff like it, it gets very, very convenient to be able to buy things like that online. Uh, even, I'll say this real quick, even the other day, I was doing some work at my grandmother's house, and, and uh, there was a package in the mailbox, uh, and this happened, I'd check it every week, every couple of weeks, and it was for the neighbor. I don't know how in the world they put it in that box. It was just it was stuffed in there and got it out, and it's from Bass Pro Shop. And so I thought, I bet they did something for hunting season. And so I uh, ended up taking it over to the neighbor. Uh, before that, though, actually, it was just kind of coincidence, because I don't know how long we'd been there, but there was a FedEx driver passing by the, my grandmother's house, and I was trying to wave him down, and he'd look at me. I thought, well, okay, I guess I'll. Take it on up there, and they said, I've been hunting for this package, been hunting for this package. We you know, didn't know where it was at. But you're hearing that time and time again, right? And, and again, I'm giving Susan a commercial in town, you know, don't make sure you go through the postal service. Uh, but, uh, but we know today that, uh, you know, Christmas is, is really, it's, you know, in, in those situations, it's more about giving really than receiving. You know, I enjoy, you know, we enjoy Christmas, and we, you know, it's nothing wrong with enjoying your families and that kind of thing. Uh, but we know through the hustle and bustle, all through all the hustle and bustle that we see today, uh, we have to realize what the true meaning of Christmas is. Amen. It's, it's about Jesus, about what Jesus has done. Uh, we know Jesus was born in the flesh. We know from the last couple of weeks that we preached that he was born in Bethlehem, how God stepped out in, into eternity, and, or out of eternity and into time. Uh, we know Jesus. Uh, we, we know through his life he was a great preacher, a great teacher. He, he performed miracles. He was a healer. We know Jesus came to, to earth to die on the cross for our sins. He rose again from the dead. He ascended back to heaven to make intercession for his people. And he's gone to pass a place uh, there. We know all this and more. And, but today... We're going to be looking at the, the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, look at some deliver. Uh, just like I know FedEx, there's a lot of people waiting on packages that ain't going to get there. But we're seeing, we're going to see something in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Yes, we know that, that the first part of the, the verse talks about his first coming, which his first coming was when he was born uh, in a stable and born in a manger and he came the first time as a baby. But then we're also going to see uh, the second coming. Of Christ and, and how that uh, is, is shared here in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. But let's go ahead and read the scripture. Uh, just kind of give you a backstory. We know, uh, again, what Jesus Christ has done in the whole life and today that that true guilt is, is Jesus Christ. Um, I know today, I, I, I don't mean to point around on last week, you know, I actually got baptized. If you wasn't here and you missed it, but, you know, she got baptized on her birthday and and I know a lot of times in our life, uh, you know, we may have a, a, a gift that we really enjoyed and, and that kind of thing. And, and uh, But, you know, I started thinking about when I was younger, too, the Atari 2600. Did y'all ever play on anything like that? Y'all did? Okay. I mean, we used to play that to no end. And uh, I'll never forget that I, I wish, you know, man, I hope, you know, I get one of those for Christmas. And I... And I Gave the hints. It's kind of like on that movie Christmas Story where they kept giving the hints about the BB gun. You know, I kept giving hints about the Atari 2600, but then it was a lot of money. I don't even remember how much it was, but it was a lot of money. Couldn't buy it. And, and I'll never forget that, that first Christmas we come in and it was there. I thought, man, you know, I just thought that was the coolest thing. I've always played this game. It wasn't long. It wore out. It went away. And, and I'll never forget, I was actually working in, in Mulga, Alabama. Uh, the bank I worked at at the time, they had a 
foreclosure down there, and I was waiting on Hannah home. They was coming to get some items out of that house, and I, there was a uh, next door. There was a yard sale that was there, and I thought, well, I'm gonna walk over there to see what they got. I was waiting on the trucks to get there, and and I and I didn't have mine no longer. I think it wore out. It wasn't any good. They had, they had a Atari 2600. And they had uh, all these games went along with it. And I, I wanted to buy it just to show the kids, you know, hey, this is what we used to play. They'll make fun of us a little bit. But I'll never forget that I looked at it. Here it is now in a yard sale. Guess what? I told them the story. That's for my kids to, to see this. And uh, gave it to them. They had the games and all. I thought, you know, now, now here it is a gift to you. And, uh, but, I, but we think about life and think about what's important to us. Uh, but when it's all said and done, I don't care what kind of gift, as far as the world is concerned, the only gift that's going to matter in your life is accepting, you know, that gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've got him, if you've got him, buddy, you've got it all. I don't care what happens. I don't care if you lose it all. You know, just, you know I, I tell you, you've got it all. And, and, and that's the true meaning of Christmas is celebrating Jesus. I know the last few years we've kind of scaled back ourselves and and really try to think about the true meaning of Christmas. And it's about that gift, that, that free gift that we can accept that's only through Jesus Christ. And I know even in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world, you know, gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Ain't you glad today to know you have that eternal life if you're a Christian? Uh, but in, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, that cost you anything extra this morning, uh, for, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it, with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you for many blessings. We thank you, God, for your word. God, thank you for your promises, Lord. And I pray today, Lord, in the sound of my voice, if there's anyone watching uh, online or here in person, God, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, God, we pray, God, that they would give their heart and life to you. God, we pray today that uh, your Holy Spirit and work your uh, just work through our congregation, Lord, and whatever you're leading us to do, God, we would step out in faith, Lord. I praise you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. God, thank you for him saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for uh, just all the promises and things that we can see all through Scripture. God, knowing that you're in control. God, we know that you're there. And, and I pray today that every one of us here today can just sit back for just a moment, not think about anything outside these doors, not think about anything we got to do today or got to do tomorrow, this week, but just worship your son, Jesus Christ, God. And I thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Lord, just thank you again for sending your son to die on the cross for us, die on the cross for us that we could have eternal life. And God, we're thankful that it's for whosoever, God. Lord, just thank you that it's for anyone, Lord, that feels that tug on their heart, God. They can, they can come to you. And God, we love you and we praise you. And again, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But as we think about some of the greatest gifts, uh, we're going to look at today some gifts that have not yet come. Um, and I know that we're going to see today that they're delivered by the power of God and through his word. Now, <clears throat> One of the things we see that these gifts that I'm going to be preaching to you today about, they will come in the perfect time. Now, I know the, uh, I, this, we got a church close to where we live, actually grew up at, that had a sign uh, in, front of their, in front of their church that had this that said, God's timing is our schedule. And, I, and honestly, when I kept driving by to drive by it every day, it just kept kind of hitting me, and I just didn't really make any sense. And it was kind of going over my head to a certain degree. It's kind of like the other night at Juana's. We had a Juana pizza party and had a good time. And, and one of the kids come up and wanted to tell a joke. And what's bad, it was telling Jimmy, he, he got on his phone, he was telling some good dad jokes and Christmas jokes. And we had a good time, did we not? And, and uh, but I'll never forget the little boy come up, he told me a joke, and I couldn't even get it. 
And I said, you know, what did it first before you say it? But I didn't know. And he told me, and I was sitting there like, I don't even get this joke. You know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden he told it, and everybody's laughing, and it hit me. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what it means. Okay. But there for a quick second, I'm like, I don't know if you tell it or not, because I didn't get it. You know? But, uh, but, I, but I, I started thinking about that sign and, and, and then talking about this. You know, the, these gifts that I'm talking about come in his perfect time. We don't know the schedule. You know, we don't know when it's going to happen. And, and, and through all that, you know, even the rapture of the church, I believe, is the next big event, next event in, in Christian history. Uh, but we don't know when that's going to take place. You know, I believe it could be today, it could be a thousand years. We don't know. And just because we may, I mean, we can look at God's Word and know this. Uh, but again, it's going to come. In his perfect time. Amen. In his perfect time. Uh, we may wonder, uh, you know, whenever all this is going to happen to be, but we know that, that he will come. We see in verse 6 his arrival. Uh, we see it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, in these verses, they make great claims concerning the Lord Jesus, and a few uh, were fulfilled when he came the first time. Now, in, in verse 6, the first part of it, it says a child is born. How many of y'all ever seen a child born before? I mean, it's, it's just a wonderful thing that you see a child. I never forget uh, Presley was born. I, I was there, and, uh, you know, they brought, you know, ended up after they cleaned up, brought us to them in stock, and she was born on Christmas Day, and Marley, and, and uh, think about, you know, seeing Leola and, and Jeremy. You know, you just after they're born, and you just get to hold those babies. And I, just, I started thinking about when we think a child is born. I think sometimes we think of, you know, like even a, a play. And, and I'll show this. Should I show baby Jesus? I don't know if I should or not. Should I? Yeah. yeah. This, this is baby Jesus tonight. Okay? All right, baby Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. But uh, anyway, just give y'all a sneak peek tonight. But uh, I think a lot of times we look at, at Jesus just like he's a. A doll or something like that, and I know it. But it, but really think about that. He was a baby. You know, Mary had the, the sinless Son of God, and, and I know this is a a manger that they have made. But it was it was a, it was a trough. Wasn't it? it it was a where horses and and uh, livestock. You know, they were able to eat and that kind of thing. It wasn't as pretty as what we try to make of it. And, and to think about a baby, you know, when it's born, you know, just holding that baby and, and just the pride you have and, and it just, you have that love that you never thought you could have for anything. And, and I, you know, just, you know what I'm talking about, you know, everybody agree what I'm talking about, just holding that baby. And, and I started thinking about Joseph and Mary and, and this baby is born, a child is born. And for us to think about being a baby, to be a, you know, not just some kind of, doll, robot, or anything like that. It was, a, it was an actual baby, but that child being born, it actually uh, <clears throat> identifies him as man and how he was fully human. He knew pain. He knew temptation. He knew sorrow. He knew grief. He knew hunger. He knew thirst. He even knew how it was to be alone. Uh, and, and I know we don't have anything on the screen. Hopefully we'll get this fixed next week. But if you'd like to turn there, uh, if not, listen. Uh, Matthew 26, verse 56. Uh, <clears throat> what we see through Matthew 26 in this part of the scripture is we see Christ's death being voluntary. Because he basically says in verse 53 that he can now pray to his father and he can bring legions, uh, 12 legions of angels. And, 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 and again, he talks about the scriptures being fulfilled. But if you get down to verse 56, it says, But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. It says, Then all the disciples, those that he was close to, those that was there with him, up to this point, it says what? Forsook him and fled. The sinless Son of God. Going to the cross, even for those disciples, one for us, forsook him and fled. But I know, as far as the world was concerned, you know, he was there alone. And, and that word forsook him kind of took it another step 
I got to looking at the Greek word for that word, word forsook. And basically it means to forsake. It means to lay aside. It means to leave, uh, to put away. And one of the other uh, <clears throat> definitions, I guess you'd say, for that word in the Greek means to yield up. You know, basically when they, when they lay off and they forsook and fled, they just yielded him up to, to the crowd. But again, he knew all of these things. Uh, and, and through the virgin birth, God became human. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 uh, and, and 14 even, says, In the beginning was the Word. Now, I know I'll bring it out of King James, but the Word is who? Okay. Let's try that again. The Word is who? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Uh, if you've learned anything from Johnny and the one, if you don't know the answer, just holler Jesus. So, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we know that, that, that Jesus is called uh, the Word here. Uh, in John, or then in verse 14, it talks about the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So you may be sitting there thinking, well, if you're talking about Jesus, what do you mean when you say the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God? Well, if you go back to Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26, we see in Scripture where it says, let us make man in our image. Uh, Jesus was there, again, from the, from the very beginning. And now, uh, when we think about a child was born, also it says, unto us a son is given uh, the phrase the sign is given identifies him as God. You know, God didn't come into the world a, a fully grown man. You know, he came as a, as a baby. Uh, he came as a, an infant. But that baby and that and it was God. Uh, he was given that we might be redeemed from our sin and born again into the family of God. Ain't it good to know that as a Christian here this morning and as I know even Townley First Baptist Church, to, to just be, if you're a Christian here today, whether you're an official member of our church or not, that you're a part of the family of God. I think it's, I think it's great to know that, that we're here for one another, that we're, we can encourage one another, we can love one another and, and worship together, that we're part of the family of God. We believe this, we know this, we celebrate these truths, and the Bible is clear that we have to build on that foundation of the Word. Now, Wednesday night, I know y'all here for a while, Wednesday night, this thought came to me in the middle of the week. I was reading uh, just some devotionals and, and, and different things, and, and this was a thought that was brought up. I don't really know who to attribute to, but I thought it made a lot of sense. And how many of y'all ever had a, got a new phone? Y'all? Okay. I, I know the younger generation definitely has, I know, but I, but I know for Shelly, she got, she got hers upgraded, mine. Uh, I felt like I was looking through a spider web all the time because my screen was cracked. Finally got her old phone and I got it. She went and got her thing switched over. Uh, we do ours with Cricket. And, and uh, so when she brought it to me, I sat there for a little bit. I'm like, I can't figure this out. I don't know what's going on. You know, and, and uh, I wanted to throw it out in the yard. You ever want to do that? Just throw stuff like that in the yard? So I wanted to do that. But... You know, I got to think about this, and that thought came to me this week as I, as I was reading that. You know, I could have easily, and, and I don't have my phone with me. It's actually what's feeding right now on Facebook Live. Just feel like this is my phone, and I, I, I received it, and I thought, man, I just can't figure this out. Now I'm just going to set it over here. I'm just not going to do anything with it. You know, I'm just going to let it sit there. Am I ever going to figure out how to use that phone if I don't ever pick it up? Yes or no? Well, I, I started to think about this about the Word of God. You know, there's so many times, and, and this is the honest truth, and, and I, I, I believe this with all my heart. We'll, we'll walk home from church today, or drive home from church, I hope. But if you, if you go home, leave the Bible closed, and, and just like that phone, the more that I get in that phone, what do I do? I kind of learn how it goes, don't I? I learn how to, how to navigate it. I know how to, now I can use my phone for even family Facebook Live this morning. You know, I can do that kind of thing. 
Well, just and because of that, the time I spent in my phone, I learned more about it, right? Now, the Word of God, if we look at our life like the Word of God, the more my nose is in the Word of God, the more I'm going to learn about God, right? Learn about Jesus, learn about His promises. But what happens is, yeah, we, we come to church for that hour of worship service. We may get into it here. You may read some scripture that I share with you. And, and all of us have done it. If you've done it, but then you keep the Bible closed on Monday. Keep the Bible closed on Tuesday. Keep it closed on Wednesday. Keep it closed on Thursday. Keep it closed on Friday. Keep it closed on Saturday. Then you got a hunch of Bible on Sunday morning. Where's it at? Oh, it's my back seat of my car where I left it, the, you know, last thing. Well, then you get it out, you bring it to church, you hear a message for an hour, close it back up, take it back home, wherever you put it, you end it on Monday, you end it on Tuesday, you end it on Wednesday, you end it on Thursday, not end it on Friday, not end it on Saturday. And really, not ended on Sunday, just to be honest with you. You may say, Brother Wayne, what does that have to do with anything? I've heard people in, in my time of ministry, you know, I've said to call a preach at 24 years old, and more than my life, has been in the ministry, I guess you'd say, in, in different churches. But I've heard people that treat their Bible like that, that may come to a church and say, you know what, I'm just not getting fed. I'm just not getting fed there. Have you ever heard that before? I've heard people say, well, I just ain't getting fed there. You've got to get in here. It's not my responsibility. Now, it's my responsibility to preach the Word of God. It's my responsibility to teach the Word of God. And y'all know I'm still learning on the job. I try to do the best I can. But just so you know, it's your responsibility to get in God's Word when you get fed. Amen. Would you dare leave here today and throw your cell phone down and not look at it on Monday, not look at it on Tuesday, not look at it on Wednesday, not look at it on Thursday, not look at it on Friday, not look at it on Saturday. You wouldn't, would you? Where's that phone at? I'm constantly looking at it. I'm constantly, you know, and, 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 I, and I know it's 2021, fixed to be in 2022. I thought by now we'd have flying cars too, okay? <laughs> I mean, back when I was younger. Did y'all not think that too in the year 2000? And, and I'm, I'm saying this with all humbleness. Y'all know my word for 2021 was commitment. As we turn the page to 2022, the Lord carries his coming. What God needs is men and women of God getting in God's Word. I can't give it to you in an hour. You need to get in God's Word on your own. It's your responsibility. Amen? Amen. So I'm not preaching the truth. I mean, I'm telling I'm preaching the truth. And how I know this, how I know this, there's been times in my life <coughs> where I've sat down and not picked it up to the sun. I, 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 there's been times in my life that's happened. So I'm not sitting here but to really, and especially new Christians, new Christians, it's not a, I guess when I first started, when I accepted Christ, I thought, man, I should be able to, you know, be like a mature Christian right away. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. And I'm going to tell you too, and I'm just sharing this with you, I don't know why I feel led to say this, your emotions will mislead you. Because there's times you, you may be going through something, you you may be feeling like you, you know, going through this trial, going through this, whatever the case may be, and, and, and maybe there's something that, you know, has happened that's kind of took your eyes off the front. You know, there's some things may come up in your life that's easy to, you know what, man, this is what Christianity is about. I, man, I just don't want a part of it. Well, I'm telling you right now, Christianity and being a Christian is not easy. Amen? It's not easy. So what you got to do in those situations, 
you stay in God's Word, you start looking at the promises of God. Last week we talked about, or not been week before, the promises. We, we focused on the Word, didn't even sing a song. Focus on the promises of God. And when you have those emotions, you know, pop up in your head, as I told y'all, one of my verses was, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, that don't mean I can just do anything. I can, you know, jump off the roof and hit the ground and not hurt myself. Yeah, he ain't talking about that. But what that means for me is, is that whatever I'm facing, God's going to be there with me all the way through. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And uh, anyway, I mean, uh, but, but again, to build your faith, to build your faith is getting God's word. If you are a Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, make sure your faith is in Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the Jesus of the world, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, we see the truths here that Isaiah, he's mentioned. After the, the first two phrases we've talked about, we're going to see other ones that are not going to be fulfilled with his first coming, but they will when he shows up again. We even, and I'm going to share with you quickly some, some other scripture uh, when we talk about promises of God. John 14 and 3, he says, And if I go to a fair place with you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. We have that comfort to know that the rapture Jesus is going to return for his followers. I know even in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, they said, it says there it's got a vision of the second coming of Christ. Uh, Behold, he cometh with clouds, every eye shall see him. They also which pierced him, and all the kindred of the earth shall will to call him him, even so. Amen. And then we can even see in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. What book is he talking about? Bible. Verse 12 says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. And even verse 20 says, Surely I come quickly. And it says, Amen, amen. even so come, Lord Jesus. Jesus says, It's true, I am coming. Amen. amen. How many of your whole life, Jesus coming soon, maybe morning, afternoon, I've heard, we've heard it all our life, but he's coming. All right, don't let anybody fool you here. The rapture, there, there's two different, rapture is something different than the second coming of Christ. We know the rapture, it is to me, the Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, everything from that point on is future as far as prophetic is. We could be to read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 where it talks about, where it talks about taking his children home. That, again, the rapture could happen at any time. And then again, that, that kind of brings that God's timing or his God's schedule, God's timing uh, into in focus there. But when he does, we will receive the gifts, including the greatest gift of those which remain, because when he comes, all the others will flow out, out of this one. We see in, in verse 6 again, uh, we see his acknowledgement, acknowledgement. Isaiah tells us when Christ comes, he will be given many titles. And if you will look in Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 9. <clears throat> it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. That word wonderful there in, in Hebrew means marvelous, um, a miracle. <clears throat> Supernatural means secret. It means extraordinary, far beyond our comprehension, but yet can be believed by just a little child. That's just amazing how God works. He's wonderful in His words. He's wonderful in His works. He's wonderful in His ways. Uh, all the things that 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 Jesus is, that God is. And uh, can you agree with me? He is wonderful. Amen. Amen. He's, uh, he's also
also a counselor. Which in the Hebrew word means to advise, means to counsel, means to advise, uh, to plan. It refers to his role as the, as the leader and the guiding force of our life. Now, how many of y'all ever been to a counselor? I, I have. I've been to a professional counselor. I've uh, been to one professionally, but I've also been to Christian counseling. I've, I've been to uh, just through my life and a good pastor friend of mine. I know I've told y'all Greg Tinker was one of those that I went to for Christian counseling. And when I needed it the most just in my life and just felt like, you know, I wasn't worth nothing. I just felt like I was at the bottom of the barrel and, and uh, God never could use me again, that kind of thing. And, uh, but when it's, we see the word counselor there, you know, Jesus is the best counselor you'll ever have. Amen. Amen. The more we get in God's word, that, that's what's going to help us to be able to focus on those promises. Uh, he is mighty God. That means powerful, warrior, champion, chief, hero. Uh, how many of us have had heroes in our life? But he is the one who is strong, he's mighty, he's invincible. He alone is worthy to be our hero, for he has defeated all of our, our enemies. When we think of death, you know, he's, he's defeated death, amen. Sin, Satan, the, the grave, eternity, hell. He, and, and, and I know, as far as being a Christian goes, if we was to look at John chapter 10 and verse 28, one of our one promise that we have um, says, my sheep hear my voice and I will know them and they follow me. It says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. I and my Father are one. But to think about having that eternal life. Never perish. There's not an asterisk there. You know, it ain't like, well, we're going to give it to you, but just, if, you know, but if you're blah, 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 or if you're good enough, if you, you know, I mean, it doesn't say that, does it? If we truly accept Jesus Christ, we have that eternal life. Amen. From this day forward. Amen. And, and it's so important uh, for us to, to look at that because. When we think about him defeating through, through Jesus Christ going across his son, defeating hell. You know, I know today that we've got a, a probably a generation that don't like to hear about hell. And, and we know that there is a heaven. We know this church there's a heaven, there's a hell. And I preach on hell and talk about hell and share that. It's because I don't want anybody to go there. We don't want anybody to go to hell. Amen? And the only way you're going to be able to not go there is through the mighty God and, and what God has done. And, and even the next uh, thing, when we talk about wonderful counselor, the mighty God, and, and it doesn't say the Father. It doesn't say the Father, does it? It says what? The everlasting Father. And that word everlasting in Hebrew means duration. It means perpetuity. It means without end. We cannot comprehend perpetuity or without end. We can't, we can't comprehend all of that because he's everlasting. He's the great I am. He's not the great I was. He's the great I am. He is everlasting. He's always there for us. And, and he's our father. He's our source. And as a, as a father, he, he supports us. He, he, he's there for us to help us. To sustain us, to comfort us, to provide for us. Ain't you thankful that we have an everlasting Father? Amen. Amen. That may not do anything for you, but it does something for me. I mean, we've got an everlasting Father. And he goes on to talk about the Prince of Peace. He will rule his kingdom in peace. But also, if we read a little bit further, it says, and of this increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. No end. Tells us when the Lord comes, one of the other gifts he will give the world will be the perfect reign as king of kings. When Jesus comes back, he will come as king to rule. Uh, we can look at scripture, we've been reminded of 
We talk about the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 9 and 10 says, After this manner, therefore, I pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Even in uh, <clears throat> Revelation 19, 15 and 16, it says, Now his mouth go with a sharp sword, that with, with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his pasture and on his thighs name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. He will establish his eternal kingdom. And even in Psalm 145, verse 13, it mentions thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. We cannot comprehend eternity. We cannot comprehend eternal. We can't comprehend everlasting. But that, that's what we see here. Uh, verse, uh, verse 7 of the increase of his government and peace. Shall there be no end upon the house, throne of David, upon his kingdom to order it. And to establish it, listen, with judgment and with justice. From henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now Isaiah tells us that the coming king will rule with judgment and justice. And he goes on to say from henceforth even forever. All, of it, all it takes is a simple glimpse at our world to understand that this gift uh, yet to, to, to just to believe and and knowing what God can do for us. And I know today uh, we had a group of people last year. One of their slogans was, no justice, no peace. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? And that's all they said, no justice, no peace. And, uh, and really what they were standing up for wasn't even for justice or peace, was it? And, and, and that's the thing about it. We, we hear that on earth. Nothing like that is going to, I don't believe we're ever going to see anything like that as far as on this earth. Uh, but leaders, you know, they can't even get along to even conduct business of, uh, of the, uh, the, the world or even the, the United States. And when Jesus was born, the angels rejoiced that the Christ child would bring peace to the earth. And I know even in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. When Jesus comes to rule as king on earth, there will be peace. There will be justice, and there will also be perfect judgment. Imagine a world of, with no war, no poverty, no injustice, no religious or racial differences. Imagine a world in which every citizen, each Christian, uh, worships God Almighty uh, to, uh, to the Lord. How will all this happen? Well, if we go back to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, <clears throat> we see a word called zeal there. It says, The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So the word zeal means enthusiastic, it means diligence, and the Lord will not quit until he accomplishes all these things. He's not going to quit. He will not rest until every promised gift of Christmas is delivered. And as I said, it's in his time. You know, we can't make up a schedule on our time. Uh, it's going to be in his time. And that's what's so great about God's word <coughs> And we, we can talk about promises and, and maybe there's scripture that you've leaned on yourself in, in your life. But, but God will never break a promise. Amen. How many times have we broke promises? We, we've all had that. We broke a promise. 
but we see here that he will not break a promise, and we know that he is coming back. Now we think about Christmas time, we think about the, the baby Jesus, and, and, and again, his life, 33 years, sinless, went to that rugged cross, died on the cross for me and for you, that we can have that eternal life. And through, through God's word, through uh, the sacrifice that God gave his only begotten son. I don't love you enough. I love you. But I don't love you enough to give a child for you. Do you? Nobody does. But God loves you enough. You may be sitting there thinking, well, nobody cares. Nobody loves me. I mean, I just, and I'll tell you, God loved you so much, loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. As a Christian, I, I said, showed you earlier that the greatest thrill, the real gift is Jesus. If they was to say, Wayne, I tell you what we're going to do. Instead of you being a, a Christian, instead of you being a, a preacher, a pastor, we're going to let you be the President of the United States. Which, I mean, I wouldn't want to do it anyway. But, but just so you know, I would be stooping down to that position. If I, if I did anything, being a Christian is right here. Okay? I don't care what you do in this earth. Man, give it all to him. <coughs> anything else is just is a stoop down from being a Christian. Amen? <coughs> it, it, uh, if, if you've got him, you've got it all. I don't care what your past is. I don't care what's, what's happened. I mean, I'm telling you, if God is tugging on your heart, he can wipe all that away just because of, of what he's done. He's already done it. He can miss it. He demonstrated that love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. That's a promise. He loved you that much. Shall you come play verse invitation? I'd just like for you to bow your heads and, and just have this time. lost and don't know Jesus Christ that today would be the day that you would give your heart and life to him it's either heaven or hell as Shelley plays it's, it's either heaven or hell there's no in between Help us to to, uh, to realize.